That's a way here. Yeah. 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 Just in case. 1970. No. Sure. Screen. We already did introduction, so we didn't get. Oh, I'm Darcy. Yeah. Michelle. Michelle. Mm -hmm. Thanks for reminding me. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so we are starting. It's going to be my third time teaching this. Um, really in Hebrew, street Hebrew course. Um, and let me just explain what this course is and what this course is not. This course, we are going to be going through. Uh, the letters and the vowels of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, the goal is that at the end of the five weeks, you should be able to open up a siddur or any book if it has vowels and be able to read the Hebrew words. We're not going to be co covering or touching on comprehension. That's its own class on its own, which we're not doing. Maybe we'll do in the future, but that's uh, we're not going to be doing that. Uh, now, although the goal is to give you the tools to be able to learn, read Hebrew, uh, the only way you will be able to read Hebrew is if in your own time you practice. If you're just going to come here, you might be able to get it for the for a few days, for a week or two. But if you don't keep on going over it, you're just going to forget it. So true story. And, <laughs> it's my second time to <laughs> So so uh, what I would strongly recommend. It's really it's really a must if you want to every single day these five weeks. Every day, just take five to ten minutes. Put in your calendar to be able to go through the cards, the book. Once you get the book, if you have a book, or once you get the book. It's going to, that is going to lie to read Hebrew. That's the class. And I know it's hard. Everyone has their busy schedule, but it's important if you want to be able to read to practice at least the five, 10, especially the third, fourth, fifth class once we start putting words together, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and once you get get the, get a hang of it and you use it every once in a while, um, you'll be able to really be able to read uh, any word you want. Um, now, one of the challenges of such a course is that I'm sure everyone here, is on different levels. Some of you maybe have never taken a course, don't know any of, don't know how any of the words look or letters look. Uh, some of you may have more knowledge. So the first two classes is going to be more basic and we're just gonna go through the alphabet. We're gonna go through the alphabet, be able to firmly grasp every single letter. Um, class number three, four, five is when we're gonna move on to the vowels. Uh, because the first two classes, some of you may already know. Um, some of you, some of you, so we're here. So I just realized I'm recording it. So they want to see my face, not my back. <laughs> um, because the first two classes, some of you may know the alphabet, um, we are going to add a little bit. And that is some of the Kabbalah, some of the mystical uh, teachings behind the letters, uh, which some of you may find a little bit more interesting. However, don't get caught up in that. In other words, that's the bonus. That's the extra to make it a little bit more interesting for those who already know the alphabet. The main thing is to get the letters, to be able to identify and there's as we're going to see there's some letters that look similar to other letters and people many times get confused as you're looking at the letter between the different letters um so the main thing is to firmly grasp the different shapes and what the letters make and what they sound um and that is going to be um so again we're going to go through the first part of the alphabet today all the way through the lamed from the mem till the end we are going to say for next week following that next week we will start um, we will start moving on to the vowels and putting words together. So make sure. Uh, yeah, it is being recorded. Okay, now you do have uh, I, every single one of you has one of uh, some of these um, some of these reading Hebrew cards. Um, now these are going to be for you to bring home to practice. Uh, there's also an app. There's a read in Hebrew app. I believe it's a dollar ninety nine to download it. But then once you have it. Over there, it's more audio. So if you want, it's the same thing as these cards, audio. It gives you audio prompts of what the letters sound. So that is, um, I believe, I haven't looked at it for two years, but I believe it's just called R-I-I-H, read in Hebrew. Read it in Hebrew, what this course's name is called. Can Let I me... get it for a dollar sixty-nine? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just, I'm just going to read it 
in Hebrew. Let me just make sure it's here. Yep, read in Hebrew. You put read in Hebrew and you'll see uh, it looks exactly like your cards. Read in Hebrew. It's right over there. Yes, $1.99. You could download it. Again, you don't need it. It's not needed because you could do it without it. You can do it with the cards, but if it will help you to have that audio prompts, you could download there. And sometimes people do practice there on the way to work. You could, you know, you could do it that way. Okay. So with that being said, let's move on to the actual letters. Um, and we're going to try to keep this on time. Uh, try to keep it to an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half max. Uh, try to be out of here between 8.45 and 9 o'clock, every one of these five lessons. So let's move on to the first letter. And you could take out your cards. Um, card number one is going to be just the olives as you see it. Um, and card number two, oh, sorry, that's two. Okay, so card number two is double-sided. Uh, it has the olive both with the, with the, with how they're called, without how they're called. So you could practice to make sure once you have it, you could switch, uh, uh, turn it over to practice. But we're going to start off with card number three. Card number three is, everyone hopefully recognizes this. This is the Aleph, the Aleph in the, the Aleph, the first letter in the alphabet. What is, what is the letter Aleph? What is the sound of the Aleph? So it's a little anticlimactic. Aleph has no sound. There is no sound to the Aleph. The Aleph will take on the form of whatever vowel is underneath it. Aleph is silent. It has no sound. There is no sound to the Aleph. So, um, for example, we're going to have a vowel, which is ah. So if you have an Aleph with, a, with that vowel, the sound will be ah. You know, you have a vowel, which is a. So if you have an Aleph with that vowel, it will be a. So we're not up to the vowels yet. But for right now, Aleph is silent. There is no independent sound to the letter Aleph. So what's the point of it, actually? So this really... First of all, first of all, it, it, it adds once you have the vowel underneath it, so now it gives gives uh, gives a uh, sound to the word. You know, you have many words that start with the aleph and a vowel. For example, the word aleph. You have aleph starts with the letter aleph, but because it has that vowel of the a ah underneath it, that makes it into aleph. Uh, but this really goes and, and I, this really was part of the introduction. There's something unique about the Hebrew language, which is not, we don't find by any other language. And that is, this is according to the Torah mystical teaching of the Zohar, that the Hebrew language is unique in the fact that all other languages, from what I understand, and maybe some religions hold differently, but from what I understand, most all languages, the letters and the sounds are all arbitrary. You know, why is a, why is a T make a T? Because that's just part of the English language. That is, that is the rules of the English language. When it comes to the uh, when it comes to the language of Hebrew, the Kabbalah, the mystical teachings tell us that God actually created this world using the different sounds, the different letters of the alphabet to create this world. And therefore, whatever the you know, a table in Hebrew is a shulchan. Now, in a shulchan, you have five Hebrew letters. You have the shin, you have the vav, you have the chesh. We'll get to. God actually created all tables using these letters. So the truth is. To say why is that letter there, we're going to see certain letters have identical sounds as other letters. But the truth is every single letter of those is was, was made by God and used in order to create this world. So we start off with the letter Aleph. Now a little bit of Kabbalah um, on this letter. It's like, uh, it's, uh, is If you take a look at the Aleph, there's three parts of the Aleph. You see there is that upper part, there is the line in the middle, and then there is the lower part. What do these three parts represent in Kabbalah? So it says there's a story of the first Chabad Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, who one time took his young child to teach a, to, to, he was uh, five years old, and he said, I want you to teach him. And he said, here's how you have to start off teaching him. You're going to be teaching him the alphabet. What is the Aleph? Well, Aleph, as he, he pointed out, is you have that one, that, that piece on top, where he said the Yud on top, the Yud on bottom, and the piece in between. The yud on top, that, owl, that, that piece on top is God. That piece on bottom is us, is this world. You know, God, God is above us. God is, what is that? What is that which connects us and God? We're down here, we're worldly, we're physical, and then there is God up there. That line is the line of faith. When we have faith, when we, are, when we have that emunah, as he said, 
that connects us with God. So if you say over here, it's on the God above, who is, if you take a look at the PowerPoint, God above, who is beyond human comprehension, Jew below through humility, one becomes a vessel for God's wisdom. Another thing is humility. And then you have Torah and Amuna uniting a Jew with God. Amuna, the Torah and Amuna is faith. Our faith in God, that unites us. That because, you know, we are so far from God, what makes that connection is, you know, that, and that really is the Aleph. Again, the God, us down here, and that faith that we have, which connects us and this world to God. But again, that is all the extra. Um, Aleph also, as you're going to see in your card, has a numerical value. Every single letter in the alphabet has a numerical value. And that is the number, Aleph is one. The first letter in the alphabet, the, it is number one, and this refers to God. Sometimes we refer to God as Alufo Shel Olam, Aluf, Aleph of this world, the one, the one, and the 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 one and only of this world. So Aleph is a very obviously a fundamental. It's the first letter of the alphabet. For the sake of this class, it is silent. There is no uh, there is no sound to it. It takes on the sound of the vowel. Um, now. In the Hebrew language, and this sometimes makes it a little bit confusing, is there sometimes there's different fonts. Just like you have in English, you have different fonts. The alphabet is actually a capital and lowercase. You also have different fonts and you have cursive. You have the same idea in the Hebrew. This is, so we're going to go through some of the different uh, uh, types of alphabets that are out there. You have this, 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 and this. Forget, forget about that last one. That make, that's cursive. We already did. <laughs> that's cursive. You're not going to, you, on a regular text, you're not going to need that. That's a little bit more advanced. The first three, as you see, they all look pretty much, they're all a similar style, just different fonts. That is how you're going to have to look at Aleph. So whether it looks like that, like that, like that, the main identifying points are there. You have the three different, you know, the part coming out of the top, the part coming out, out, out on the bottom, and the middle piece. And that is the Aleph, again, which has no sound are we good okay yes that last one is cursive that's uh that, again that's more advanced you know it's uh you know sometimes some of the commentaries on the torah who were written in the you know uh, you know 10th century 11th century were in cursive so you know, i learned it when I, in school oh yeah? yeah 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 that's cursive that's that's more advanced but again that's uh that's not going to be as important to know let's let's move on to the let's move on to the next Letter, which is bet. Bet, and bet has a twin. One has a dot, one has, does not have a, a dot. One is a bet, and one is a vet. Now, what is a sound? So here is, take a look at the uh, PowerPoint. Bet has a button, B, button. Remember, if you see that, 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 that piece inside, there is a button. Bet has a button, but that is going to be bet. Vet is vacant. Mm -hmm. It is vacant. There is no button. It's vacant. So you have the but and you have the v. So here we are introduced to the first sounds in the Hebrew language. The b and the v. Although they're different sounds, they're considered twins. They're interchangeable. Sometimes you'll have uh, the same you know, you'll have words with it, without it. But again, if it has a dot in the middle that has a button, it is a bet. If it does not, it is vacant. It is a ve, a v, a vet. They're twins, but not identical. Right. Not identical. Now, this is going to confuse you a little bit, but we're doing this in order that you shouldn't be confused. Take a look at the next slide. No, oh, sorry. I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. That, which we're not going to name, you might know it, but if you don't know it, it's not important for now. There's another Hebrew uh, letter that has this sound. That, that looks like that. Looks very similar. What's the one difference? The tail on the bottom. So remember, the bet and the vet is going to have the tail at the bottom. So the button has the tail. There's a bet, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give time for practice. But again... There is a, that's again, we're talking about different letters which have look similar, and that's where people get confused. It's important to recognize this is a bet and a vet. We're not talking about that yet. That we're going to get to later today. But here we have the bet and the vet, which is a ba and a v. Is that who? Kaf and ha. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yes. 
No, completely different letters. That's why it's important to be able to to be able to hammer this down. Again, it has a tail. It's the bet and the vet. Later is going to again. It's going to be the cuff and the cuff. We'll get we'll get there when we get there. So this is the bet and the vet. Ba and va. Ba button vacant. Button and vacant. Okay. Now a little bit a little bit deeper in this letter. Going back to this. Um, going back to this letter. You know, let's go back over here. So as you see, the bet and the vet is open on three sides. Sorry, it's closed on three sides. It has one side which is open. Now, this actually, the world was that if you take a look at landmass, you have east of the universe, east, south, and west. There's landmass. The north is open. This is how the world was created, like the bet. And what is the message over here? The world was created incomplete. There is that open side. It is our job to complete this world down here. And that is what the Zohar, the Kabbalah, tells us the shape of the bet is like the shape of this world. And the world was created incomplete with a side open in order for us to be able to then complete this world through our good actions. And therefore, what else starts with a, be, uh, with a bet? The Torah. The Torah starts the first word of the Bible. The Torah is Bereshit, the bet. Because how do we complete this world is by being able to do the, to, to the, the mitzvah, to do kindness, to look at the Torah, how to live a moral, ethical life. That is how we complete this world. So again, this is a little bit deeper idea of what Kabbalah tells us. The bet is, um, and that is, again, let's take a look over here. The Torah begins with the letter bet. One, another idea in the, uh, in the, th uh, the opening is you're, always move forward. You know, it's closed up, facing that way. A person should never be satisfied with where they are. A person should never be complacent. Complacency is the first sign of decline. In order for us to be able to grow, we always have to be looking forward, where can I grow? So these are uh, different ideas in the bet and the vet. But again, for the, uh, the most important thing to remember is bet has a button, it is a b, and the vet is vacant, it is a v. Are we all clear? Right? Sorry, yes. Did you say the open side is the east? North. North. North, north is, uh, north it says, remains open. And this is both uh, uh, geologically correct. And also the Zohar tells us, way before they figured this out scientifically, the Zohar already told us the north was uh, remained open. Um, and this is our job. Actually says, uh, actually says that Kabbalistically, evil comes from the northern side. And it's our job to correct this world and to be able to counter that evil, that darkness, through our actions of good. Okay, moving on. Again, uh, every few letters, we're going to stop. You're going to take your cards and you're going to mix them up and you're going to do some practice to be able to get the hang of it. So we're going to do some practice over here uh, during the class, but most of the practice will be done um, on your own at home. By the way, everyone's uh, welcome to get some a cold drink, water, seltzer, or a piece of cake. Um, okay, next letter. Moving on to card number five. I don't have a card. I'm going to take that card whenever I, whenever I see um, moving on to ca uh, card number five, and that is we have a gimel. Gimel is gimel. Oh, people recognize it from the jail game. So this is uh, one of the ones that people know. This is the third letter in the uh, in the so we're, the JLI. The way they did it in their the way they did it, they try to give uh, uh, give memory different uh, uh, codes to remember. So here we have glamorous gimel has a high heel. Gimel. Gimel is, uh, has the G. The G, no, I don't know if I want to call it a, a G because it's not J, it's G. It just has the G sound, Gimel. So that is the letter of Gimel. Again, another sign. Here we have two different letters. You have the Gimel and you have the, let's, uh, one second, sorry. Yeah, that is the nun. There is going to be a letter. We're not even going to cover that this week where it's flat. There, it, it looks exact same besides for that indentation on the bottom. So again, it's important not to get confused between the two letters. That's why it gives you the high heel, the glamour, the glamour, the gimel. That is, so the gimel is the third letter and this is the G. Okay? Now, a little bit on a deeper level, what does the Gimel, according to Kabbalah, represent? So Gomel, 
Gimel, which also has the same word as gomel, means a giver. The person that gives, the person is, or the, it is talking about a person that gives. Someone who is a gomel, if you have many in, um, in, in religious communities, you'll have many um, uh, organizations which give, whether it's free loan societies or charity societies, and they're called gomel chasadim. You may have heard the word gomel chasadim. This is because gimel has the same letter as a giver. This is what you would have. The gimel is the person who is running to give. It's almost a shape of a person running, a person going to give. This is the gimel. Um, now, what is the numerical value of gimel? So you had aleph was one. The second letter was bet and vet is two. Gimel is three. According to Kabbalah, gimel also represents that which is able, what Gimel represents true unity. Number three. Why does three represent true unity? Because as long as you only have one, there is no place for anything else. Then you have two. And two many times are opposites, or they don't get along, or you could you could have, you know, you could have arguments. Three is that which brings the two together. The third one, the third number three represents that which is able to bring two sides together. That's why, that's why the Torah was given, yeah, you want to call it the mediator, you know, the third party, which is able to make that independent decision. It brings the parties together. That is why the Torah is represented by number three. It was given in the third month. Um, you have the you have the three parts of the Torah, the Torah, the prophets, and the scriptures. Why? Because it says you have this, you have God, this world. Torah is number three, which brings the two together. Through being able to connect to the Torah, to, do, uh, to listen to the Torah, then we're able to make that unity between the spiritual and the physical. That is number three, which is represented by the Gimel, which also is the giver. Okay, so Gimel, we had Aleph, we had Bet and Bet, which is again a twin, we there consider one letter, one twin letter in the alphabet. And then you have the Gimel, which is the G. We're going to do two more letters, then we're going to stop for uh, a few minutes, for three to five minutes for you guys to practice on your own. So again, we are we did the first three letters, three or four, if you want to call the vet, it's four letters. What's the, what's the time? Oh, we're doing good, we're doing okay with time. Okay, we're moving on to the fourth letter. Card number six. Card number six is the Dalid. The Dalid, as we're going to see, has another letter which looks very similar to the Dalid. Uh, which that's going to be the race. But what is the Dalit shaped like? I mean, what is a sign to remember? It could also be a little bit like a hammer. Yeah, hammer is a little bit like a Dalit. So a hammer dents things, makes dents. Again, if, if this makes things more confusing for you, you don't have to look at you don't have to look at this. This is their way of trying to sometimes when you associate different shapes with different things. It could be easier to remember. So JLI found this, but there's, there's a, no word doesn't say anything about Dal being a Dal making a hammer, uh, being a hammer or denting things. But again, the Dalit is the D, the duh. I think the hammer actually should have been the other one. So now, if you had, now we said Gimel is the Gomel, the person who gives. The Dalit is the person who receives. In Hebrew, a dal is someone who is destitute. A poor person is a dal. So you have the gimel going to give to the dalid. The gomel to the dal. The gimel gives to the dalid. So again, you have over here, the gimel is running to give the gomel, the giver. The gimel, the gomel, the giver gives to the dalid. The person who is there, the destitute. Now, why is he turned away? Because many times people that take need to take are a little bit embarrassed. It's not. It's not. It, you know, there, there there could be a there could be someone be embarrassed to take, and that's why it says, "What is the best way to give charity?" If you know someone that's needy, what is the best way to give charity? Where the person does not, where both the giver and the receiver don't know where it's coming from. The giver gives it. In the temple, it says there was a room which was called the, the, the silent room. And this was, people would go give to that room, and then the destitute person, the poor person, would come take from that room. But no one knew if someone was entering, are they going to give or are they going to take? And this protects the dignity. The best way to give is when both you and the person who is, both you and the person who is uh, getting, 
does not know where it is coming from. So this is why the person is turned away because ultimately the best way is if you give the, you know, the best way is if you don't know who you're giving to. But if you have to know the person you're giving to, it will be the best if they don't know where it's coming from to protect that person's dignity. That's why the Dalit is turning away from the Gibel. Um, but again, for the sake of our conversation, uh, for the sake of this class, the most important thing to remember of the Dalit is the Duh. Now, you have what else is in, in, in the Jewish tradition, the three and four? Who knows who knows one? The song, who knows one? You know, people say that in the Seder. Who knows one? I know one. One is Hashem. Anyone heard that song? There is three and four. There is the three fathers and the four mothers. Yeah, we have three uh, patriarchs and four matriarchs. Three patriarchs are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The four matriarchs are Sarah, Rivka, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Now, why is that? Why is why is there three, and why is there four? Because in Kabbalah, we, and we spoke about this in a, a previous JLI class. What in biology, the man is the one that gives the seed. The woman is the one that cultivates, receives the seed, and then cultivates it into a human being, into a, to a baby. If you're lacking one of them. You're not going to have a baby. You have to have both of them. Now, what is the more important one? The cultivator, the woman. The, without, without the woman, you're, not, you're just going to have a seed, a piece, a, a sperm, not going to get you anywhere. But over here, you have in the giver and the receiver. So you have the, the we said the gimbal is the giver. That is the three fathers, because the fathers represent that which give. And then the four mothers, the dalid, which is the receiver, they take and they they cultivate it and make it into a, something which is ready. So that is a, 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 a Kabbalistically why three is the giver, the three fathers, and the four, the four mothers or four matriarchs are the receiver because that is how it works in this world. God created this world that you have the masculine energy, you have the feminine energy, and that is the gimel and the dollar. So again, you could have it in the giver of, of charity and the receiver, but in general, in this world, everything in this world, there is the giver, and there is the receiver. There is the initiator, and there's the cultivator. And that is the masculine and feminine e energy, which is represented by the gimel and by the dollar. Okay, now, just to confuse you a little bit, there is another letter, which is going to look just like the dollar, besides for the back. Now it doesn't look like a hammer anymore. So you have to remember, the dollar, that's why it gave the, uh, the gives a hammer, it has that back porch over there. So we're gonna, we're, as we're going along, and as we get here, we're going to, you know, mix it up a little bit. And that's why these books will come in handy because they'll put many of these letters side by side and you're going to have to identify them. Um, and as we get along a little bit better and better at that, but again, we are looked at the dollar. So we have the Aleph, the Bet and Vet, the Gimel, G, and now the dollar, the D. Okay? That is the first four letters of the alphabet. And moving on to the fifth one before we take a... Uh, a few minute break to practice. We have the letter of a hey. The letter hey is ha. Or if you want to take a look at the sign of JLI, like a breath of ear, there is a breath of ear or hey, his foot is broken. Hey, ha. Here you have hey, which is looks like this. And this is the ha. There is no real, I guess the H. The H is the is the hey. Um, now, Kabbalistically, what do we have? What do we have as the hey? The hey represents the idea of teshuva repentance. Sometimes we feel boxed in a little bit. You feel boxed in a little bit. Sometimes you feel like it's closed up. You're in a you're in a you're in a bad place, and there's nowhere to escape. The hey tells us that you may be surrounded. But there's always going to be a small opening you escape. There's always a better place you could get to. You, yeah, you may think you're stuck somewhere. You're stuck in a bad place. You're stuck in a, a place you don't want to be. There's always that opening. There's always that opening which allows you to get out. That is the hey. There's always a way out of any predicament. Um, don't get down. Yes, you may be right now feeling a little bit trapped. But that hey tells us there's always that. Maybe sometimes it's a very small place. And it's hard to find it. But don't give up. There's always a way. To get out, yes. So, so we're going to get there. 
the hay looks similar to the ches. The ches is closed up. That we're going to get to there. If you take a look, if you take a look at your second card, take a, go back to your second card. Oh, okay. Go go back to your second card, where it has the alphabet, all the alphabet, the whole the whole alphabet. No, like the all the letters. Is that the second? Is that card number two? Yeah. So if you take a look after the hey, three letters later, there is that's the chai. That's closed up. You see it's closed up over there? Ha, is yeah, that but over here we're not there yet. That's that that's another one where it's gonna be two letters which look similar. But over here, that, that that's why it's important to remember there is that space over here. There is that space. If it has a space, it's not the ches anymore, it's not chai anymore. That's the hey. So this is the hey. Tells us again, we can always, um, we can always, there's always a place to get out, which this leads us to practice. We're going to, we're going to what? Yes, this is number five letter, as has the numerical value of five. I'm going to take five, five, take three. We're going to, we don't have that much time. Take three minutes now. First, put all the cards in order and uh, take a look at them and then mix them up. And then don't look at the other side where it doesn't have the sound of it and make sure you have it down the different sounds to all the letters. I will get myself a cup of water. You can do it with yourself, you can do it with your neighbor. Yes. so yeah, in that idea out there. Um, those are those are the types of four So for Spanish people. Mysticism is that which is above the physically above the that which is revealed, you know, revealed, and that's what is mystical. So that's the deeper part of the Torah. So that's why it's called that. But it's Rob, you know, this is a little difficult for Spanish people because they pronounce V like B in Spanish. Uh -huh. So she when I asked her, she says bet and she says bet. Bet? No, but bet. But if the truth is because they're considered twin letters, it's not the biggest deal to pronounce yeah. bez, ven, vez, bet. They're, they're, they're interchangeable. So again, if you're the the, the 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 proper way is the bun the ve, but if you if it's if you if you kind of mix them up, it's not the biggest deal. Especially if you're in because they're considered they are considered twin uh, they are considered twin uh, twin le twin letters. So it's considered one letter. It, yeah, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's two letters, which is like a subset of one. No, and in a, yeah, it, it's two different letters, but they're considered like a subset of one another. Okay, are we ready to move on, or should I give another minute? I remember the song, but that's it matters right there. <laughs> okay, okay, let's. <laughs> yeah, the problem is when you're trying to read a letter, you can't really, there are different, like, you, can't, you can't use the song. Right. Okay, moving on. And at each time we do practice, we'll get a little more time because we're going to have more words to, more, more words to review. Okay, we're going to do another five letters here, and then we're going to review all 10 of them. The next letter is the letter of Vav. Card number eight, we have Vav, the sound of, now, what else had the sound of a Vav? Vet, very good. The Vet and the Vav have an identical sound. As I said, many letters in Hebrew 
will have the same sound as one another. So the vav is a v. Vav is very straight and very thin. So it's, uh, let's try to remember the vav, the very straight and the very thin. Um, that is the letter of a vav. On a deeper level, what is the vav? So vav, also in the in the Hebrew language, and again, I mentioned we're not going to go through comprehension, but I'm going to give you a taste over here. Anytime you have a vav at the beginning of a Hebrew letter, uh, unless, unless it's part, in other words, if the letter comes, the vav is before it, that means it is and. Vav is and. It, it makes a continuation to the previous idea. Before. Yes. It's before another letter. No, well, if it's before a word, unless the word starts with the vav. But most, for example, a uh, a table is shulchan. If you see vis shulchan, that means and a table. You know, uh, uh, in Hebrew, many times the you know the and you know the, the those those connecting words are going to be part of the word. So the vav is and which connects. A vav also a connector. Table and chair. Yes. So you'd say table and chair would be shulchan, which is table. Kise is a chair. So you say shulchan ve kise. The vav is the connector. What does the vav also look like? If you use your imagination a little bit, looks like a hook, a vav. A hook joins two elements together. The vav represents that which connects the higher and the lower. Um, so this is the idea of the vav, that which is a connector. Life, we should be connectors. We should connect people, which connect ideas, uh, which connect that which is above and below, the spiritual and the physical. That is the vav. Vav literally means a hook. A vav in Hebrew is a hook. So a vav is that which connects. It also says vav shows on completion. Why does vav show on completion? Because how are you closed up on all sides? There's six directions. There is up, down, north, south, east, and west. So therefore, when you are completely closed up, when there is completion, that is the vav, because vav is a numerical value of six. It's the sixth letter. So you have the six different directions there. That is the vav. But again, the vav, the most important thing to remember is the vav, um, okay? The hook joins, links words, phrases, and chapters, and bespeaks general continuity. Has yeah, I, I mean, I just want to it looks nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it? Yeah, you're right. And uh, push it to the side. Okay, but yeah, you're right. That is a little bit of a reach. Um, there you go. <laughs> okay, listen, I've, I've seen worse. <laughs> okay. But again, the vav is the v, has the same sound as we already did as the vet. But over here you have the vav. Moving on to the seventh letter. And that is, who recognizes? Zion. The Zion, which is the Z. Like a vav after a couple of drinks. Yes, there you go. <laughs> and that's why it is, what is, this, what is the way to remember that? Zion is zigzaggy. It looks like me. Zags college. a little bit. <laughs> It zags a little bit. This is the, the Z, the Zion, zags. It is the letter of the Zion. Zion in Hebrew means weapons. Yeah, how do you say weapons in Hebrew? Is Kli Zion, instruments of weaponry. Zion is weapons. What does, what does, what does Zion have to do with the idea of weapons? What also, Zion is Zion. the seventh letter. What is the seventh day? Shabbat. Shabbat is our, the, so to say, our weapon. The, how are we able to persevere through all the persecution? We always had that one day, which was to God, to connect, to be able to spend with family, to connect with that which is higher. This was our weapon to be able to go through the grind of life. The grind of life and the grind of, you know, social media and everything out there is to have one day which you really, you know, you put everything aside. So this is the Zion which is a weapon, but again, it's the Z. Here you have the Zion. Um, you also, in general, the Zion is not a Shabbat. You also have the sabbatical. So what is a sabbatical year? Is the year which is, which is off. Again, which is also the seventh year 
in Israel, every seventh year is, you know, we let the, uh, the land rest. So this is the Zion. Uh, Zion is the weaponry. Okay. That I can see. Yeah, that was one of <laughs> Okay. And then we have the Shabbat, which is on the seventh day of the week. So really the idea of covering covering the eyes really comes from the idea of it, it's it's more you're, you you want to it's really more about the about uh, bringing the heat having having the warmth of the shabbat candle enjoying the warmth of the shabbat candles so first you go like this to bring so to say the warmth and then you cover your eyes to say the blessing um okay so that is the letter of the zion okay moving on to the eighth letter here we have a Jewish word, which many people who are not Jewish or even many secular Jews struggle with saying this. And that's why people call it Hanukkah or Hala. And it is the Cha, the Ches. Here's you were saying the Chai. We had mentioned before, over here there is no, before, remember you said you, the hay looked like over here. What's the difference? Over here is closed up. The hay had that opening. The Chet is completely closed up. And this is the Cha. You have to use the you have to use the throat a little bit, and many people have a hard time saying this. But this is uh, Hebrew. Do, do other languages have the ch? The Spanish have ch? I don't know. I wonder. I think the Russian. Russians have. Uh huh. Okay. So here you have the ch. Now, what is a uh, what is a uh, what does this look like? Okay, a chuppah, a chuppah, like a chuppah, it's shaped like a chuppah. So imagine a chuppah canopy, but again, don't think of a canopy because they're going to say cut. Think of a chuppah, and there you'll have a, you see the chet, the chuppah. Chet is shaped like a canopy, a chuppah, a wedding canopy. Now, eight, speaking about the Zohar, the Kabbalist, the Kabbalah of this a little bit, eight represents that which is above nature. Why? God, there's seven days of the week. God created this world in seven days. It says there's seven attributes. Chet is above that. So why is Chet the book? So now, a chuppah is a marriage. In order, in order for a marriage to remain solid and to remain strong, we have to deduce that which is above that cold logic. You have to, you have to be able to transcend. Sometimes you may not be into the relationship, right? So sometimes, you know, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, you know, so therefore you have, as it says over here, a true marriage transcends nature and logic, for it is based on a soul commitment. This is the idea of chet, the idea of the, of the idea of the, so the chet is the chuppah. They had that see, now you see how it actually looks like a chet. I like that soul commitment. Yes. <laughs> well, they had that three wings. Yeah, the three rings. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> the later. First, you have the engagement oh, ring, then you have the wedding ring, oh. then you have the suffering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on to the nine. Uh, moving on. Uh, okay, eight represents. Also, why you have the bris on the eighth day? Yes. Yes. There we go. I, uh, that's actually part of my notes. I was about to forgot to say the Brit, the circumcision represents our bond to God, which is above nature. That's why we don't wait for the child to understand. We don't wait till he's 20 years old so he can accept. This is representing your everlasting bond, which is above nature. It's on the, on the eighth day. So eight represents that which is above nature, like a chuppah, a wedding. So chet is chai, chuppah, chanukah. Those are all a chet. Okay? Eight represents that which is beyond nature, the super rational, and the supernatural. Oh, because chai. Wait a second. The word chai means life in Hebrew. The chet and yud. So, what's your question? Oh, that's a word. It's not a letter. Chai is a word. Once take you take a look at his hat. His hat says chai in it, but it's a chet and a yud. Which then uh, we're gonna once by lesson number three, you'll be able to. You know, <laughs> yeah, but a chai starts with a chet. It starts with a chet. Yes, the numerical value of chet is eight. 
Now, chai, why do people give chai uh, uh, amounts by chai, by 18? Because a chet and a yud together is 18. A yud is 10, a chet is 8. E together equals eight, uh, 18. And that's why people, when people give, they give by, you know, either 18 or they give by uh, multiples of 18 uh, because that is chai. Okay, moving on to the next letter. Next letter is the letter of tet. Here you have a tet. Yeah. Now, if you use your imagination a little bit, what does a tet look like? A teapot. Yeah. Shaped like a teapot. Shaped like a teapot. Tess. Tess is a teapot. Now, what does a tess also is the word for tov. Anyone knows what tov means? Good, very good. <laughs> very good. Tov means good. Mazel tov. Mazel very, yes. Mazel tov. Good, have, a, have a good, uh, I'll use a good luck. He uses congratulations, but he's good luck. So now, why is, why is tess tov? So first of all, it starts with that. But tess is the numerical value of nine. Tet. Oh, okay. so uh, some people call it test test or tet, but again, the main thing is the beginning, the tet. Okay. The tet the is tea. your uh, uh, or... yeah. But now, what does good have to do with nine? So, what is nine months? Nine months of pregnancy. Right. Now, pregnancy uh, comes with a lot of pain. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of times that like there's some pain when it comes to pregnancy. There's uncomfortability, but ultimately, it leads to the greatest good, the greatest blessing. Sometimes good in our life. At the beginning, it seems a little bit, it seems, it seems hard, it seems uncomfortable, but ultimately it leads to a greater good. Ultimately, sometimes the greatest good is only if it comes after that which is, you know, pregnancy, after that which is uncomfortable. If there's some pain there, that leads you to the greatest good. So this is what Kabbalah tells us, Tess, the Tet, the nine, which is good, is represented by the number nine, the nine months of pregnancy. Here we have the Tet. Um, and sometimes the baby is something, only God knows what is objectively good for us. Sometimes we see something and it seems to us, this is, this is not the worst thing that happened to me. And the truth is in there is the greatest good over there. You have, uh, you know, the, the seeds to be able to get you to a place you never would be able to, uh, to, to get without it. There you have the tet, uh, the T. Now the tet looks similar to another letter and not to get mixed up with. That one. Sometimes people will get confused. Anyone knows what that is? Man. The men. Very good. We're not there yet. We're going to get that uh, that letter next week. So if you're not, if you don't know what the letter is, don't worry about it. The point is, remember this is a teapot. That that's not a teapot. This is a teapot over here. It has the tea. It has the. Uh, it's closed up on bottom, and that is the teapot. So that is the tet. Okay. Get the difference between the two of them. Okay. How are we doing, Karen? We're, we're, you're with me? Tom, we're, we're good so far? Okay. And we are now going to move on to the last letter before we do a small break. And that is the letter of Yud. No, no, this is Ya, the Y, the Ya. Over here, we have the letter of Yud. Now, how do you remember we, this is the smallest letter there is. Now, what is, you know, the, the, there was a YouTube experiment that went around a couple of years ago asking people, random people on the street, how many Jews do you think there are in the world? People were saying a billion, 500 million, 2 billion. The amount of attention we get, you know, people would think we're, you know, a billion people. But yet, we are barely at 14, 15 million. We are this. We are from the small. It's not maybe the smallest nation. If not, we're one of the smallest nation. So therefore, the ya. How do you say a Jew in, in Yiddish? Yid. Ya. So the yud represents smallest, like a yid, the Jew. We are. We are very. We are from the smallest of the nations. The ya. The yid. Here you have the ya. So if you call somebody Yiddish, you call him Yiddish. Yiddish. The yud. So um. Now, Yud also represents God. It says God because God is that which is indivisible. There is no shape and form to the to God. So every other letter has a, a, a greater form. The Yud represents that which is formless, so to say. Um, yud alludes to God, who is one 
and transcends all limits. If she was small, powerful like God's name. Yeah, well, what the Jew, what the Jewish people have accomplished in this world, of, despite our small numbers, is quite remarkable. I believe uh, you know we're a fraction of a percent of the world, and I believe we have over tw- over twenty. I, I believe it's over thirty percent of all the Nobel prizes that have been given out. Um, so yes, we may be small, but we connect to God. We have a we become powerful. So that is the next five letters. So we so far we've done Bob. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dal, Hey, Bav, Zion, Chet, Pet, Yud. What you should do right now is take, don't do all of them, it's going to confuse you. Take cards 8 through 12, the Vav, Zion, Chet, Pet, and Yud, and practice them. That's what we just did. The Vav, Zion, Chet, Pet, and Yud, practice them. Once you got that down, then put the first cards also and practice all of those as well. So first do the Vav, uh, card number eight through card number 12. When you have that down pat, then add and start, and go back to card number three and add that together. And then you can mix them up and make sure you have the sound of them. Again, you could maybe use with your neighbor. Uh, if you want, you can practice with your neighbor to test each other. Uh, Michelle, test how. Test <laughs> yes, yes, that's God's name. Yes. Good. Yeah, so God's name, when it says uh, a double yud, we're not pronouncing God's name as it's written. It's a sign for God's name. It's not, uh, so it's uh, but, but but the point is, you got it right, because the point is, remember the z, the, the, so yeah. And the, na- the name of the letter is less important than the sound it makes. So if you don't remember the name, but you remember the sound, that's the most important thing. Ask her. I need probably the same. Okay. What is the teapot? So it's test, test, and this is your dining. You know, I have the first one. A bunch of cards. Okay. I like the denial, so it's clever. But it's when I, I took one Hebrew and they did it in the American alphabet. Uh, okay. Listen, there's many different ways in. It's, it's oh, funny because I remember the, the beginning of the alphabet, but I never mastered the end. No problem. Yeah, yeah. The, listen, there's many different ways in teaching Hebrew. Uh, this is one of the ways. This is the uh, way they found to be very. Um, right. They found this to be a very. Uh, Weapon. <laughs> 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 Um, oh, yeah, that's a good way. Israel, Zion. What? Baruch Oh, okay. <laughs> another way. We'll give another 90 seconds till we move on. Uh, another two minutes till we move on to the last section, the last couple letters. With the so, extreme so orthodoxy, or because yeah. knowledge is really bad. No, it's it's it's. But then else. Right here. I mean, <laughs> it's hard. I, I'm not sure what extreme means. In other words, we're very orthodox, but we're not. If you what, what you. 
I guess I guess the question is how do you define extreme orthodox? Oh, just, oh, just orthodox. Is that like the most religious of the orthodox? Or would that be Lubavitch? Because Lubavitch is more religious than the orthodox. No, Chabad and Lubavitch is the same thing. Okay. It's the same. So so Chabad is Lubavitch. Yeah. That's all I need. Okay. <laughs> Okay. How, how are we doing? Are we we master the first ten letters? Master's kind of a strong word. <laughs> okay, let's let's move on. Uh, we'll actually finish on time, if not early today. Now, the first two lessons will be shorter because this is just the uh, alphabet. Once we move on to class number three, four, and five, that's when we're actually putting words together, the vowels. Um, and that's going to be, you know, a little bit more intensive. Okay, moving on to the next letter. We have similar to, oh, we, we looked at this card before. We looked at this before because this looks similar to the, the bet, the bet and the vet. Over here we have the cuff and the chaf. Now, how are we to remember this? So again, by the bet and the vet, what was the sign? The bet has a button. And the vet is vacant. But here, a way to remember, or at least, is the cuff has a cough drop. Cuff, cough drop. <laughs> <laughs> the cuff does not have a cough drop. So therefore, it's like very uh, sore. Sim similar to the... It, the, vet, the vet. But does that have the same feeling? No, but what does it sound like? Like you have a call. Chet, Hanukkah, the Chai, the Chet. The Chet and the Chaf have the same sound. So far, we had two different pairs of letters which have the same sound. We had the Vet and the Vav. And now we have the Chet and the Chaf have the same Ch. Then you have the Kaf, which is a K, but I got K. Um, and here you have the Kaf and the Chaf, as similar to the Bet and the Vet which are interchangeable and they are, you know, they're considered a subset of each other, twin letters. So too, the cuff and the chaf are considered twins. Um, one has the cough, the cough drop, the cuff, and one is the chaf. This is the cuff and the chaf. So that's why when you read the Hebrew alphabet, it actually says less and the chaf. So the letters are pointed on the end and the other does not. That's the difference I see, right? The, okay, yes, so yes. The bet and the vet have the, the, the ledge in the back. The cuff and the chaf don't have it smooth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it goes smoothly down. So again, it's, remember uh, the, the bet, I don't know if you want to, I don't know, the bet has the bridge in the back, the, the, the back, the, the tail, the chet, the chaf does not, cuff and chaf do not have. Now, uh, just, uh, Michelle asked, why do you have to have the chet and the chaf, uh, the, the, the chet and the chaf? You could ask the same question about the bet, the, the vet, and the vav. Really, if it was just logical, there would not need to be, uh, we wouldn't need that. But again, this is the holy tongue uh, where the, the, the Bible, the Torah was written in, and these are considered, you know, every single is instrumental in the creation of this world. So that's how that's how the alphabet is. But again, the chet and the chaf are interchangeable. Um, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah. Now the kaf and the chaf, what do they represent? They are bent. They are present Submission, to be able to go, become, become close to God, it says we have to submit ourselves. We have to have humility. You know, that says, well, the, the Talmud tells us that God does not rest. Talmud says about one person God does not rest in. Who is that? Someone who is arrogant. Someone who is haughty. God says, I can't, I can't be with you. You're taking up too much place. You think you're everything. God says, I need someone to be a little bit, submit themselves. It'll be a little bit humble. And this is the cuff and the chaf, which are bent. Kaf actually literally means a kaf is a spoon, which is bent. You have the kaf means to bend and signify submission to God's sovereignty. Here you have the kaf, the kaf and the chaf, which again have the same uh, same shape. Just one has the kaf drop, one does not. One has the kaf and one has the chaf. Okay? What I was trying to ask before, yeah. is that like bent and bent are the same and the kaf and Chet are the same. Chaf and chaf. Chaf and chaf. Okay. I, yeah. I put it. Chaf and chaf and bet and bet. Yeah. Okay. 
Bet and Vet are one subset of letters, and Kaf and Chaf are another subset of letters. Okay, yes. so in essence, there might be really 26 letters, but there's only 24 because of the twins. Yes. Okay, yeah. so I was trying to ask. And now we are going to now we are, we're going to uh, we're going to run into that a few more times. You know, different like subset of letters which are considered the same but a, a, a slightly different sound. Okay. Now we're going to introduce to you something new. So we till now we've just been doing letters which have their own distinct sounds. Now what we are going to the next uh, card, which is card number fourteen, is what is called a final cuff and a final chaf for whatever reason. And we're not going to go into right now. For whatever reason, in the Hebrew alphabet, there are a few letters that when they come in at the end of a letter, I'm sorry, when they come at the end of a word, they have a different shape. So in other words, a cuff and cuff, as long as the beginning or the middle of a word, it will look like we've been, it will look like, like this. Cuff or cuff. Cuff or cuff. But once, if it ever finds itself, if the cuff or the cuff, ever find itself at the end of a letter, it will look like this, the final cuff, or the final chaf. So if you find it, again, it's, it, it, we're going to, as we're reading words, you'll, we'll, we'll come across it. But this is the same exact sound as the cuff and the chaf, is just when it's in the beginning or middle of a word, it's closed up, you know, it, it bends. It, it, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, that shape, I, you know, I don't know what you want to call that shape, but, if it is at the end of a letter, it just goes down. Use that. So this would be in the beginning or the middle. Or the middle. And this would always be at the end. end. Always be at the end. You're never going to find the final cover, final cuff at the beginning or the middle of a word. So the same exact sound. You just have to remember the ka and the cha. This is just if it's the end, end of a end of a word. End of a word. Um Vayavarech, it means okay. and he blessed. Yivarech echa, the beginning. Uh, um, um, Darcy. Vayavarech uh, means and he blessed, but it ends off vayavarech, so it will ha it'll end off with this. But if you say if you say uh, you know whatever Chabad uh, again, Chabad is the Ches, but that would be the beginning, so it would be with the with the Chaf, not the final Chaf. Well, like Baruch. Okay. Baruch, Baruch, very good. That's a good. That's a good example. Easy example. Everyone know Baruch Ata. Baruch ends off with the final chaf, so it looks like this. If you take a look at a sitter, you find Baruch. It's going to. It's the chaf is go. The chaf is going to look like this because it comes to the end of a letter. I'll show you. Up. Okay, that's the vowel. Don't go back to the vowel. Yes, you see how it's 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 uh yes, take a look over. I mean once you get to the the words, once you get to the words, you'll see. But again, this is just the same sound, uh, but it just is at the final cuff and the final chaf. Right, it's that's that's true. That's true. That, 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 that's a true point. It looks, it's going to look like a, the final chaf looks similar to a dal, it's just longer. It's a dal, but it's longer. So therefore, it's important to recognize if it would stop over here, that's a dal. It goes down. That is basically like you're taking the cup and the chaf and you're just taking this piece and you're stretching it out. You're just bringing it downwards. And that makes it the final cup or chaf. We're going to see there's a few letters in the Hebrew alphabet, which are a fine, which have the final letter. And that is, if it ever uh, comes in the end of a uh, end of a word, it will have a different shape, but the same sound. So here we're being introduced to the first uh, first word in the alphabet, which has this idea. It's also called uh, kaf sofit or kaf sofit. Yeah, right? sofit means end yeah. in Hebrew. So the end of a, the 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 kaf which comes at the end, the kaf which comes at the end. Yes. So final kaf, final kaf, um, or in in, uh, in in Hebrew it's kaf sofit, which is the end. In Yiddish, it is a langa kaf, a langa kaf, which means a long kaf and a long kaf because it's long, it's longer. So different ways of calling it, but the point is that it comes at the end, at the end of a word. And this is the, this is the eleventh. That is the okay, yud. So it's the same as 
Yes. Once you get past the year, I mean, this is just, again, this is just for your interest. We talk about gematria, numerical value a lot. So yud was 10. Once you get past yud, it doesn't go to 11. The numerical value of cuff is 20. And then we're going to go to 30. So cuff is the numerical value of 20. I couldn't make it easy. <laughs> so here you have the cuff. Okay. It also gives you, it also, on your cards... On your cards, it gives you also uh, spaces to write it on your own. If it helps you to write it, build your, uh, you know, boxes to write on your own, your own practice. Um, okay. And we will go to the final letter of today. And that is the letter of Lamed. Lamed. And Lamed is the La. Lamed. Lamed on a... On a their way of remembering it is a lama is a lanky ladder, a lanky ladder. <laughs> okay, if, it, if she says a lama, she says yeah, it looks yeah, like a lama. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but this is a lamid. Now, what is on a deeper level? What is lamid? Lulamid, lulmod, lulamed means to learn and to teach. Ultimately, the purpose of existence is both to learn. But then not just to learn, but once you know something, to teach something. Well, why don't they start with rabbi instead of like Muhammad was? What? A rabbi to me is a teacher and somebody who passes on knowledge. So why don't they start a Hebrew word with the letter Lamed for a rabbi? I, I hear, I hear a good question. I mean, uh, uh, you know, a rab also means uh, instructor, but right, right. Lumod uh, Lamed means to learn and then to teach. And ultimately, you know, uh, I started off with. Uh, with the first Chabad Rebbe, uh, the Alt Rebbe, but the sixth Chabad Rebbe, Rabbi Yossi Zeshneris, and so his, one of his most famous lines was, if you know Aleph, teach Aleph. In other words, a person never knows too little to teach something. Everyone has that knowledge to impart. So as soon as you know, even the first letter of the alphabet, you, can already, you already have something to teach someone else. And this is the Lamed, which teaches, which is, um, which, uh, which again, is to both learn and then to teach. And also on a deeper level, the, the Lamed, again, I don't want to confuse you here, but Kabbalistically, the Lamed is made out of a Chaf and a Vav. How? You have the Vav on top of the Chaf. And the Vav on top of the Chaf. Now, what is Chaf and Vav? We said Chaf is the numerical value of 20. Vav is the numerical value of 6. 6. Vav is a 6 letter. So 26 is the same numerical value as God. So Lamed represents God and make God and his greatness the center point of our life. Again, this is a little bit, a little bit of a deeper idea. But again, if, we, if you think of a, a Lamed, again, this could be confusing, but if you think of a Lamed as a cuff, uh, as a as a, as a chaf with a vav on top, that's 26, and that is God. So that is the next letter. But again, the main point is the La, the Lamed, which is um, the Lamed, the, the letter of the L. So we learned Aleph. Bet, bet, gimel, talad, hey, vav, zayin, chet, tet, yud, taf, chaf, final chaf, and lamid. Now I want everyone here for three minutes to go through their different cards, try to practice, um, and... After that, we are going to call it an evening. I like the addition of the outlet. Yeah. Were you you were in the previous class? No. 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 No.
He's saying the previous Hebrew reading course. I want to add that because I feel like a lot of people know, you know, some of the elements, so especially in these two classes, which makes it a little bit more interesting, yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. Stop recording.